Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well today. So today we're going to do something a little different. So, in one of my thrift store hauls, I had found this little thing. Um, and with some scrapbook paper or something, I believe is where this came from. Um, and it's just three rings. It's the smaller rings. I have no idea what size, so you have to forgive me on that. Uh, and they have, you know, just some little lace and ribbons tied up here. And a couple of charms. Let's see, there's a little charm here. It says, made with love. So, really cute. Um, so, what this is, I kind of put it all down. So, what I'm calling this is uh, three ring thingy. Because I have no idea. You could use it for journaling. You could also use it for an ephemera holder. So we've got three ring thingy slash ephemera holder. And I have written down um, all of the measurements, you know, for me. Because, you know, um, yeah, I lose my mind really quickly these days. And where we're going to put the score marks and how we're going to fold it and where we're going to punch it. So we got that there. I will keep that close. Uh, I did make a prototype, which is this one right here and this is super cool because um i wish you guys could feel this this feels velvety so it's raised up slightly so super cute cute so this is how you open it up so it is the same as this one you have to forgive that because i did take it apart because i wanted to see exactly how how they did it so you could use this to journal in or like this one on the back and i did notice which is why they probably chunked it is they put the little ephemera see they have a few pieces of ephemera that was already in there or i guess that could be an uptuck um, but i'm assuming they put the pocket on there upside down so if you had them down here where they're supposed to go you could put some ephemera in it you could also put like two pockets going this way and put some small ephemera in there so this is what we will be making today um, and look, I didn't even get rings out, guys. See, I told you I'm all over the place. Um, oops, I think I do have a valid, a valid reason. So, I have, are these the same? Nope, that's not one. Yep, so these look to be about the same size as those. And let's measure these. They look to be like one inch rings. So, you'll need three one inch rings. And then on these, pretty much, let's see, this one only has... One, two, three, four. So this one has four. But as you can also see, you have plenty of room on the ring. So of course you could do a lot more than that. All right, so we have our rings. Let's get that put back up. All right. Um, I also, I have this ribbon. I did not have it ready though, you know. Me, didn't think this through before I hit um, go or start or play or whatever it is but I do have a little thing over here that I just stick little bits and pieces in here so perhaps we could use some of these if that's not enough then I'll just you know I could just pause the video oh look see there's another piece um, yeah I could just pause the video and run get some and come back so anyway this is what we're going to be making today all right, so what you want to start out with, guys, so I will we'll put that away. Don't think I need that ruler, so we'll put it up. Okay, so starting out with a 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbooking paper. So what you do want to use is like, um, yeah, this is just like heavier scrapbooking paper on this one, but these are all the thick cardboard. Um and then I also, guys, had a piece of, let me go ahead and show you this, huge oversized, um, I think this is actually antique from the 1800s, uh, ledger paper. So I just went ahead and measured it and cut me down a piece so we could even use a piece of that in there. Um, so you can pretty much use whatever you want. Some of it is, like I said, the, light, the heavier, heavier stuff here. Um, and this piece of paper happens to be Anna Griffith. It's 2003, so, yeah, it's vintage. But we do like, I do love Anna Griffith. Okay, so we start out with a piece of paper of any size, but what you're going to need is a 12 by 6. So that's why it's good to use the paper pads. So if you have paper pads that you need to use up, and Lord Jesus knows I do, so that's what we're doing, um, you know, you're going to have the 12 by 12. Uh, so we're going to want it 12 long, 
which is this way. And then we're going to do the scoring. And then tall, you want it at 6. So we're going to end up with a 12 by 6. So since this is already a 12, all we have to do, and I'm only going to cut one piece, guys. I already have all my pieces cut because it did um, end up being pretty time consuming. So let's get that ledger paper out of the way and get our cutter in here. And let's see what's on the back. So we can cut it this way at six. Okay. Um, so we are going to go at six. All right, so that's all there is to it, guys. We got our piece of paper. And on mine, I did use the uh, two-sided. You don't have to use two-sided, especially if you want to use it to open up to journal with. Um, you definitely don't have to have the two-sided. Or you could get, you know, something to back it with. You could do, like, the coffee dyed paper. Or, guys, you can coffee dye these. I know uh, Tina at Chevy Debbie Doo Dye, she actually uh, coffee dyes a lot of uh, scrapbook paper. And things like that. So that would be done too. That way it's just not white. Alright. So here we have guys to start. We've got our 6 by 12 Alright. So the next thing we're going to need to do is score. So I do have my scoreboard handy. Um, and y'all will have to excuse that. I don't know why. It looks to me like whatever this is. Is they didn't get it cut off low enough. So it kind of wobbles. Which is really irritating for what I paid for it. This is a... Martha Stewart and come on Martha sure you're making enough money you can um, you know at least put out a good quality product um, shame on me sorry guys all right so I am gonna score it with the uh, backside face up so when we fold it we're gonna be folding it this way okay so I want my backside to start like not my back back side well okay stop Lori all right so we are going to um, yeah we're gonna do something we're gonna score this at four inches so you're gonna come over here and score it at four and then we are going to score it at eight okay and then this is gonna be our top so you're going to make one turn this way, whichever way that is, right, left, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever all that is. So we're going to turn it that way. So keep in mind, this is going to be the top. And we are going to score it at a half. But when we score it at a half, guys, we're only going to the score line right here. And then down here, same thing. We're going to turn it and we're going to score across to what's going to be the top just to the score line. So we got a half, so we'll score there, and I'm kind of using my finger because it's hard to see that score line a little bit. And then we are just going to flip it the other way, and again at one half inch we are going to score down just to that score line. Okay, scoring is done guys. Super easy, and you're going to do that for all of your sheets of course. Let me sit that out of the way. Okay. So now we are going to fold right there at that score. Fold that side in and then we will fold this side in. Okay. Starting to look like something, huh guys? All right, so there we have that. And then what we are going to do is open it up. And we are just going to cut across this score line just to this score line here. So, and you can look at, you know, because several of them I had to turn it over this way in order to see the score line better. But I think I could see this better on the white. So again, we just score it to that middle, which is going to be our 8 inch. See that, guys? Because we're going to fold that over and glue it. Okay, got it? Alright, so let's come over here and do this side. 
and I guess we'll just make this one with me talking you through it and then uh, we'll make some more of these and just chat I guess all right so then we got that there and that there or whichever of these it doesn't matter which way you do them but see once that's glued down it's gonna be this and we're gonna put our holes up here all right guys I hope this is making sense because Lord, Lord knows I have no sense today all right so just on this little piece we're gonna put some glue and you can use your art glitter glue fabri -Tac, um, glue stick you know just whatever it is you want I probably should have used the glue stick on this one beings that um, it's so thin because like I said this is just the I mean it's thicker than copy paper you can tell but I have no idea oops hello Lori how about we stay on the paper but I have no idea what the what does they call that GSM or whatever that mess is on these I can't keep all that stuff straight guys okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna take this one and just fold it over on top of it gonna try to get it even there alright so those are glued down so here we go there's that alright so now it is time I'm gonna go ahead and get my other bone folder and just squish these down all right guys so we got that so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut my holes in there and for this you can you know just do it freestyle I guess if you will which I'm no good at freestyle but what we want to do with our holes is we want to um, come in an inch and put a hole from that one another inch so we have uh, one inch holes in spacing um, so that's gonna end up making it as even as I could get it on both sides okay so one inch another inch from that one so you know I guess if you're going to sit it down this down on a ruler your holes need to be at one inch two inch and three inch okay yeah I don't even think that made sense but okay so I'm gonna tell you guys what I used on the other one and what I'm gonna use on this one and it is the cinch um, so on the cinch if you're using one of these to do your holes it you're gonna punch the holes on the two the four and the six which I already have ready to go here um, and those of you who saw my haul video I did not buy this brand new and spend you know a hundred and something dollars for them which is what they are online when you go to use them I actually got this you hear it rattle yeah okay so I'm thinking it's rattling because this handle here is supposed to stay up there and it does not so whatever that it is broken however I mean it still punches the holes and it still works and it still has this to keep it you know so we're gonna use this so I've already got it all set so we simply take where we want our holes and you adjust this arm depending on you know what you need but that's all the way down um, so yeah so as you can see this is one inch two inch three inch and this here is our four inch okay because when we fold that 12 inside it's going to end up being four inches so I just push that um, all the way up in there oops oh no I hope that's going to be right it fell on me so see that's going to be the only thing about this is me getting used to it and those holes and these holes here in this piece of paper if you guys can see that it's just where I was messing around trying to make sure to get them right okay so now we will come down yep see where that fell I almost messed that up but I think I think maybe we'll be okay better luck on the next one I guess so there we go so there's our holes there yep matches the other one enough uh, yeah guys but for this I only paid five dollars so you know of course I didn't have the manual with it I didn't have you know I think new they come with some of the little ringy things whatever they call them I don't know 
um, that you do. However, I mainly wanted it for this purpose, and that's to be able to punch holes, and I can deal with that handle. Um, I'm just afraid to try to take it apart and see if it can be fixed, because then I'd probably lose my five bucks. All right, guys, so that's the first one. And you can decorate them and embellish them and pretty much, you know, do whatever you want to. All right, so I'm thinking now what I'm going to do since all of these are cut is I am just going to, let's see which way I want this one. I think I want it that way. Um, we're just going to go through and score all of these kind of like in a mass make to get some done so as you can see i am overly optimistic because we'll never get all of these done but these are some really pretty um papers here so yeah we will i'm thinking guys what i'll do is so like these this is like a lace paper uh, paper pad pack that i got so I want to make a lacy one. I thought that would look good with that. And that would look good with that. And so with that. And look at this one. Isn't that pretty? Oh. We need to make one with this. And that one we cut out is going to work. Because you guys know my um, mosaic journal cover that we made. I picked out the pages. And I'm not going to tell you yet. I'm really excited. But all I will say is this is going to go perfect with that. So I know we want to use that one. And we can use that one. And we have this one. Well, I don't know. It's got white. I want it all double-sided. So let's just see. Okay, I like this one, guys. This is textured. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like it's embossed. Um, let me see which ones I think will look okay pink's gonna go for sure that one's really pretty let's see what else is gonna go i think we'll do this yellow one to go and maybe once i get that journal done these can go with that so we have purple blue and green this one here is also embossed we have yellow polka dots that's cute okay let's just start right there guys i think that's enough but yeah it would probably be cute if we went ahead and made one um to go with that journal that one's a little rough but that's okay all right so mass make all we're gonna do is the scoring and do i want it that way or this way Going it this way. Yep. Okay. So this way we score at four and eight, and then we do one turn. And I'm gonna do this pretty fast, guy, guys. And we score at. Oh man, see, I just messed that up. I shouldn't have scored here. I was supposed to stop there, but it's gonna be okay. We'll still use it. Yeah, so this one you don't want scored. But like I said, we'll still use it. So, pay attention, Lori. Okay, so this is going to be my top. So we'll put our top there. And we are going to score at 4 and 8. And then we're going to turn it this way because this is our top. And we're going to score to one just to the score line and I can't even feel that score line I don't think I even scored it and eight and four yep maybe now we can fill it I'm afraid of punching through the paper because I was doing project the other day and punched right through the paper okay so now I fill the score line so we're gonna score this just to that score line and then we're gonna flip it and score at a half an inch just to that score line all right 
so four. This is pretty thick, so I'm going to do that kind of hard. And then turn it and do a top just to the score line. And then flip it up and the same side a half to the score line. Yeah, I hope you're all doing well today. So, um, haven't been feeling good for about two weeks and actually had two really, really bad, um, like, um, dizzy spells, I guess you would call it. Um, one of them was just like, you know, I mean, for me it was bad, but, um, always make sure to decide which, which way you want your, uh, paper going up, or the top. That, yeah, top. That's the word I'm looking for. And eight. Turn it a half just to the score line. Flip a half just to the score line. And now I think I have a ribbon. A rhythm, not a ribbon. A foggy frog. Uh, a rhythm. This is textured on this side, so I want the smooth side to be on the inside. Four. Eight. Flip a half. Where's my score line? Yep, that's it. Half score line and half score line. Um, yeah, I had a couple of really bad, like dizzy spells. Um, one of them, you know, I mean, it was pretty bad. Don't get me wrong, but nothing compared to the last one that I had maybe a week week and a half ago um my husband was not home but on his way home and it was like lots and lots of pressure in my head um had a headache for about two weeks straight now i guess like um a headache every day i could take something and it would you know ease up enough for you not to be so focused on it um where you could function but still there enough for you to know it was still there Oh, man. Well, we're going to cut that off anyway. Luckily, I went to the inside. Um, but the last really bad one that I had, guys, scared me so bad because... And I was sitting at my craft desk, so it's not even like I was standing up. But the pressure started getting so bad in the top of my head um, that I just about blacked, all, blacked out and fell out of my... Um, I didn't fall, and I didn't black out, but I almost did. Like, it was really, really close. Like, you know, I said to myself, uh, lights out. That's exactly what I said. That's how close I came to um, actually, you know, passing out. Um, so that was very, very scary. Luckily, I was able to I have my phone right here on my desk because, you know, I like to watch the videos and craft along or, you know, watch the video for you know, um, instructions on how to do stuff. So I was able to fumble and get it, and my husband was the last person, you know, I called in my phone. Okay, guys, scoring is done. Um, so I was able to get a hold of it, and luckily he had just, like, turned on our road, and I couldn't get out a whole lot because I, I seriously, guys, I mean, it's crazy to say, but I seriously felt myself fading away. I thought... That might be it. Um, very, very scary. So he got home and... Um, okay, guys. So now, Lori, pay attention. Now we are going to cut at the half-inch score mark to this score mark. So, um, yeah, so he got home and um, helped me get to the living room. So I did call my doctor the uh, next day and really didn't... You know, waited probably three days. Oh, I talked to the, well, I just gave them the message, and it took about um, three to four days, I guess, for anyone to even call me back. Okay. Oh, good. All right, so... Before I, what is it, is it called varnishing them down? What is it called? It squishing them down. We're going to call it squishing them down. Um, I like to make sure the fold's going to be, you know, at least halfway where it's supposed to be. Because 
who knows if I uh, scored it at the right place or whatever. Okay, so we will go ahead, since we have it out like this, and go ahead and glue this down. So anyway, they got back to me and like, they just didn't really have any answers or advice, I don't think. So, yeah, I love my doctor, don't get me wrong, but this, and I've been going there for years and years and years. This is the only time I've ever been, I guess, irritated by anything from my doctor's office, but I was a little bit irritated, and I think it was because it was so scary because I know and believe in my heart that... They, I mean, they have taken really good care of me. She's the doctor who actually, um, what was going on? I think I had like, and I mean, this was quite a few years ago, guys, so it's not recent, but I had a bit of a cough, so she wanted to, um, you know, like a lingering cough. So she wanted to send me for x-rays, and it was when I got those x-rays um, that they actually, I guess, had the x-ray up a little high. And when they found the uh, tumor in my neck, you could barely see it at the at the bottom of my neck, but it would have been at the top of the x-ray. Um, and they all called it, and that's when I started with, um, okay, uh, see, we'll do that part like a mass make, and then we will do all the holes. There we go. Okay, that. There's that. Um, so, yeah, it was then that they saw the... Um, found you know saw just a slight something and it ended up being just the edge of the uh tumor in my neck um which i ended up having to have a couple of biopsies uh that were inconclusive however because they were thinking it was cancer um however they did uh okay so two inconclusive biopsies and that is not fun they call it a uh fine needle biopsy well ain't nothing fine about that needle let me tell you okay so this seems to be a bit off somehow so perhaps Lori did not pay attention good let's see oh well it folds good teeny teeny tiny sliver there guys let's see yeah but, you know what, we can have that one opening the other way, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Um, we're going to go ahead and squishy squish both sides of these. Alright, now we'll bring that in and give it a squishy squish. And we'll bring this one in and do the same thing. Oh, how did I get that? Yeah, we're probably going to have to cut that down because that looks weird there. Okay, so we're going to take just a slither off of there. Um, so, yes, guys, very, very, I mean, you know, I love, I love my doctor. Um, I'll slither it. Yeah, I think that's good now. Still looks a little weird over there, but that's okay, guys. I mean, I tell you, if you want perfection, you are at the wrong channel. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and glue this. Where'd the glue go? Um, so yeah, so two weeks been had those two spells within the last two weeks the first one not so bad the last one scared the Hades out of me and so it was where you had you know the pressure and like a headache in the back of my head but behind my right ear and uh, of course you know you get all kinds of crazy stuff going through your mind so um didn't have another one of the dizzy spells like I would classify as a dizzy spell but like 
all the time it felt like um, that pressure oh okay yeah that turned out good in the top of my head um, was making me I think I would describe it as uh, lightheaded not like full-blown dizzy but enough for you to know that something was off and you know there were times at work and um, at home where like maybe you, you flinch kind of like um, am I gonna fall but real quickly like you know um, a millisecond if that's even a thing uh, and you kind of grab something and then as quick as it does that it's over and you're fine so uh, feeling like that for about two weeks ah uh, come on get in there get 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 thank you um okay cute so there's that one uh, yeah what am I doing okay you got go ahead and fold and make sure they're going to perfect okay so let's go ahead and do the squishy squish and then we'll cut um so yeah that for about two weeks where it was like a daily headache but i could take something and it would uh, not completely go away like that pressure but it would ease up enough where it was not really noticeable like you knew it was there but it didn't like bother you i guess if that makes sense um and then you know the just here and there with the um light headiness i told him it was because of all that empty space up there but um cute cute cutie cute cute okay we're on a roll guys where are we at oh lord jesus 32 minutes okay so maybe we'll stop with these three and we might end up having a um part two because yep maybe we'll just do that maybe we'll just keep going the way we're going guys and have a part two is that okay with everybody Um, so yes, but then, um, the light -headed headedness never got any worse, but the pressure was, and the pain in the back of my head behind my right ear that would sometimes shoot down, like, toward my neck, um, actually got worse, and not only did it get worse, um, the medicine I was taking, just like over-the-counter medications, um, okay, do we need a slither off of there? You know what, no, we do not. Um, it's like it stopped working, um, and the pressure was constant, the, um, and I was taking like, started out like Tylenol and then went to ibuprofen and then this thing called Aleve 2. I think it's like an antihistamine and ibuprofen or something else like N1. Uh, started taking those and just nothing was touching it. So I did make it through work. Sunday and of course we had the kids get together out back for their birthday. Just close family. Oh well, Jaslyn did have one friend come by. Um, but it was my mom came by and then... My husband and I, um, all three, my son and my two daughters and all my grandbabies, really nice. I could not enjoy it like I wanted because this headache was getting so bad. And that, where, like, the medicine wasn't helping, started maybe Saturday. Yeah, maybe Saturday. And uh, so I did sit out back. I put on my swimsuit but did not bathe and suit, whatever you, people call it. Um, but I did not end up swimming, just wasn't up to it. I had tried to eat just one piece of pizza. And then, because we elected this year, what we normally do when we have the, the, uh, uh, pool parties for the kids' birthdays is cook out. We love to, I wouldn't call it entertaining. We just, we like to feed people, guys. If that's what entertaining means, then we do like to entertain. Uh, because growing up, we were very, very poor and didn't have a lot. But as a lot of you know who know more about me, as I grew up on like probably a 200-acre farm, like I was young, we moved 
from there when I was 12, so I don't know the exact acreage, but yeah, it was probably at least 200 acre farm. It had a creek on the front of the property and a um, a lake. Yes, that's the word on the back of the property. Um, so anyway, we were very very poor. However. Uh, we never went hungry, guys, because we had cattle, we had chickens, we had pigs, and we had acres and acres of garden, which we owned a... <laughs> In the early years, I remember a donkey with a plow, and Daddy would be up there. Probably only because we were too little, because you guys also know who know me that he was a... A pretty a very abusive man no ill will guys I forgave him I mean sometimes it affects me but yeah I forgave him long long ago for me um, he also passed when I was 15 so he died September 26th of 86 um, so yeah but my earliest what few childhood memories I have it was so traumatic that a lot of it has been blocked out even the good ones if there were any but I remember daddy plowing with the plow hooked to the donkey and then later we got a tractor but it was already probably I'm sure an antique um, and you had to I don't know those of you who are familiar with tractors but had the crank on the front so you had to turn it this way it ain't no push start like you got nowadays or turning a switch or anything like or pulling like a lawnmower pulley thingy what do you recall that you had to crank it. It had a crank on the front. You should see us as small as we were trying to crank that. We had to put it to the top and literally jump up and come back down on it to get it to... Okay, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, he would, like, plow it with uh, early years, the donkey and the plow hooked up to him. Or later years when we were able to get an old antique, I'm sure, uh, tractor plow it up for planting the seeds but once that was done it is not like the big farms nowadays where um you know they have the tractors that like you plow it up you plant it you water it when it gets ready to harvest if that's what you want to call it yeah it is harvest um get ready to harvest then they also use tractors for that um you know those big old things that look like you know huge huge yeah, we had none of that. So, um, once the plowing was done with the lawn, I mean with the uh, tractor, then we would, um, this is going to be a long old video, guys. Um, then we would uh, have to keep the weeds out of it, and we would have to pull them. So, we would have to pull the weeds. And mind you guys, we had acres and acres. I'm not talking about a little bitty garden in your backyard. I am talking fields and fields, and we would have to we eat all of that by hand and daddy would send us out there in the you know 100 degree weather pulling those weeds there were no resting with one regular size mason jar of water ice water and there you go you know see you at dinner time pretty much um so i said all the all of that story to say i'm sorry guys that um we were dirt poor, but we never went hungry. Um, and anyone who came to our house would eat if they wanted to eat, period. No one who ever came to my house was ever going to be hungry, and that's for sure. Um, I feel like that's kind of the way my mom, you know, grew us up. And y'all know that a little bit about her story that her and her... Um, sisters her mom died of cancer when she was like nine stayed with the grandmother for a little while she was in ailing health um unfortunately her father was an alcoholic and was unable to care for four girls uh there was four of them i know i've heard y'all heard me talk about my mom and two of them aunt linda and aunt gloria who uh, unfortunately have since passed they all passed you know within a year of each other here recently nothing covid related but very very devastated but i mean you know they're in their 70s so well my aunt linda was in her late 60s but still far too young in my opinion to be leaving me um 
But anyway, she had a third sister who unfortunately, when I was a baby, she um, she committed suicide. Um, so don't know all the stories there, but I do know my mom was the one who found her. I was a baby, probably maybe a year old. I think it was it was either maybe it was 72 when she um, committed suicide. So um, another reason for everyone to be kind, because you never know what someone else is going through. Um, but anyway, I told all that to say that. I'm just like my mother in that aspect is no one who comes to my home is going to go hungry and I remember which I had my kids really young but I remember first starting out with my kids and then of course uh, three babies pretty much newborn two and four found myself a single mom for you know so I would go to my house it was like you know mom would be like do you need groceries whatever and she would you know start giving me things out of her pantry to bring home to make sure we had food and um so yeah i guess i'm the same way with my girls of course they come over and i get if they need anything or if there's anything in my pantry that i think they want i will start shoving um, stuff that I know they like that I have in my pantry and <coughs> excuse me guys just for a moment <coughs> okay guys sorry about that yeah we're at like 42 minutes almost and you know my throat issues I've been talking too much uh, so it's getting very very irritating so I think we will um, call this done Although I'm going to finish up real quickly the story. So, yes, when my girls come over or what have you, I am, well, my oldest one, she lives not here. Um, you know, just start shoving stuff in grocery bags for them. And um, so, yeah, so normally when we have cookouts, all of that to say, we are always cooking and making, of course, way too much food. Make sure everybody can get their belly full before they go home. Take some with them. Uh, we did not do that this time. We simply, they're like, we want everybody to rest. You know, you guys need to rest. So, yeah, we just sat around, talked, had a good time, had some pizza. All right, guys, throat really, really agitated. Thank you so much for your support, and we will see you in part two. Love you all. Bye-bye.